And we now move on to uh, questions for the Minister of Culture, Arts and Leisure. And I call Mr Dominic Bradley. With with your permission, uh, pre last can call you, I will take questions 1 and 12 together. The strategies are now being finalised and I would hope to publish them by the end of January 2015. My officials will then establish the structures for implementation of the strategies, working closely with other departments, all of whom will have a role to play in delivering these strategies. They set out roadmaps for the Irish language and for Ulster Scots over the next 20 years and a wide range of areas such as education, public services and community in the media, to name but a few. I have previously informed the Assembly that Ministers will be responsible for funding actions relating to the strategies from their own budgets, as the strategies are included as building blocks in the Executive Programme for Government. I expect Ministerial colleagues to ensure the funds are put in place to allow proper implementation. And as I said recently at the CAL Committee on the 9th of October, I will be and will continue to be a strong advocate to ensure the funding for these strategies are forthcoming. There is much expectation in the communities following the public consultations um, when people put forward proposals based on their own evidence of their own experience on the ground. And I believe ministers have a duty to fulfil these commitments. I call Mr Dominic Bradley for a supplementary. Thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and thank the Minister for her answer. Could I ask the Minister, in light of the budget uh, which the Finance Minister has revealed this morning, can the Minister say what hope there is that there will be funding in any department to implement the strategy? Well, I thank the member for his question. Um, I, as a, the Minister for Finance and Personnel, outlined this morning, but has previously outlined um, through other debates. He will, after the, putting down the, the draft budget for consultation in the Assembly today, will engage in a series of bilaterals with other ministers. I don't think this is something that people can shirk out of and use affordability as a reason for not doing it. And it's on that way, and I will continue to pursue that these strategies are fully funded. I call Ms. Rosalind McCarley. <coughs> Can I ask the Minister uh, when will the two strategies be published and can she say uh, if there will be full implementation uh, of the two strategies by her executive colleagues? I thank the member for a supplementary question, and I'm sure she picked up on the primary response I give to Dominic Bradley in relation to the, the strategies for the Irish language and Ulster Scots. I mean, January, the end of January 2015 is my uh, intended date to publish these strategies. Uh, and again, I mean, they've already, I mean, there is a duty placed on the executive and through the 1988 Act to adopt strategies in relation to the enhancement protection, protection of the Irish language and the Ulster Scots. Uh, and I do intend to make sure as best possible that every aspect of these strategies, particularly because we went out on a robust consultation, it was a very good consultation in terms of responses. I believe the responses are both realistic and do reflect the work that's going on the ground. And it's really important that other executive ministers and departments factor them and feature them into future budgets. Thank you. And I'm going to Gregory Campbell. Uh, curry my yogurt, can cook a cooler. Um, could I ask the, the, the minister, uh, she's outlined uh, what she's talking about in terms of the Irish language strategy and an Ulster Scots strategy. Would it not be more inclusive to have a minority languages strategy so that nobody feels left out? Well, if it's anything to go by what you just did, we don't need a strategy for pure ignorance. Pure ignorance. I think, your conduct, I think your conduct is not befitting members of this chamber and it doesn't warrant an answer. 
I call Mr. Leslie Cree. Ask the Minister if she could detail her department's uh, mainstream projects um, that have either an Ulster Scots, uh, Irish language, or other cultural activity that remain unspent at this point in time and are unlikely to be spent in the year 1415. Well, in relation to the, 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 the work around the Ulster Scots and Irish language, I'm sure as a member new to the CAL committee will appreciate that the, uh, the North-South arrangements have experienced difficulties, particularly for the Irish government, in relation to their uh, contribution to the budget. That, I have been led to believe, has been corrected, which is good because the work that both uh, Ulster Scots Agency and the Forest, Forest and Gilgore are doing is very, very good, not just independently, but collectively and, 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 and together. And that in itself will lead to a third part of your question in terms of building good and better relations across the island, particularly through the conjugate of languages. So I anticipate not only the money to be spent, but certainly a demand for an increase in their budgets. Uh, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Uh, would the Minister care to comment on whether she regrets the loss of Ultach in the last couple of days? I do. Uh, I thank the member for a supplementary question. And it is with regret that I'll talk. I heard part of uh, Aidan's uh, contribution on Radio Ulster the, the, the other night. Uh, and it is with regret that he's had to close his doors. And it is with regret that he and a few other groups didn't participate uh, fully in the, the, the reconfiguration around Core Fountain. Um, I am delighted that his fears uh, are, are, will not be realised uh, in terms of the deficit that it may create in terms of the present Union's noise community around the Irish language. I believe uh, Lynn Durvain through the East Belfast Mission is fulfilling that role. But it is, uh, it is with regret that, that uh, Antilles Old Talk is now closed. Thank you. And I call Mr Loris Kelly. Thank you, Prince Deputy Speaker. Question to Minister. Thank the member for her question. Um, the Ulster Augusta needs to develop a long-term, sustainable approach to address its current financial difficulties. My officials, together with the Arts Council, have been liaising with the orchestra and its management to discuss potential future operating models and alternative funding mechanisms. And in addition, I recently met with representatives of the orchestra to explore the nature of some of these problems and the problems that it faces and the work that is currently undertaken to identify possible solutions. Further work is being undertaken by the orchestra over the next few weeks to identify such potential options and indeed what their associated costs may be for the future. If the orchestra identifies a new sustainable operating model, I will give it serious consideration and subject to receiving assurance it can be delivered. It's on the basis of that I will engage with executive colleagues to assess how we might support it. Ms. Kelly for supplementary. Um, thank you, Prince Deputy Speaker, and I welcome um, the Minister's comments. Um, Minister, be aware that uh, many of the other major cities across these islands have been able to retain uh, their orchestras. I wonder, uh, have you had any uh, exploration of how those orchestras are supported uh, by uh, their uh, t uh, town authorities or indeed by central uh, governments? And what is the time frame that you're working to in relation to a rescue plan? I thank the member for her question. I, I've actually done some research myself, just like, going on the computer and looking at some of the other, I mean, for example, looked at Glasgow, looked at London, there a few symphony orchestras, um, looked at Dublin, and in, indeed my officials on with Arts Council are preparing additional research. And all orchestras across the world, from what I've seen, and, and Australia as well, all orchestras across the world are struggling to fully publicly fund those orchestras. And because of the financial situation over the past few years, they ha the orchestras have had great difficulty in getting corporate sponsorship. And when they do get it, it's not uh, over a long period of time, so sustainability is a problem. The 15th of December is the deadline for the Ulster Orchestra in terms of their management trying to come up with a rescue package. I'm sure the member will appreciate it's the name Ulster Orchestra, but really, in terms of local government, Belfast has done quite a lot of the heavy lifting. And uh, speaking to management, that I think they're going to talk to other local government bodies, but they know that by the 15th of December they need to have some short term interim funding, or else the orchestra will be in serious difficulties. I call Mr. William Humphrey. I thank the uh, Minister for her answer so far. But could, can the Minister correct what the, the, the questioner asked in relation to the Ulster Orchestra? Would you confirm that it's a regional orchestra, not belonging to Belfast, but to Northern Ireland? And could she also confirm that? In, 
quite rightly, Belfast's council has supported the Ulster Extra. Has she been meeting with other councils as well to try and secure funding and a joined up approach to secure the future of the Ulster Orchestra for this region? And could I ask the Minister, given the, what she, her initial reply about the management going forward, how much will her department put forward if the issue she has, the concerns she has, are addressed? Well, I thank the member for a supplementary question, and I think the member, uh, Mrs. Kelly, knows, you know, she acknowledged the fact that Belfast has done a lot of heavy lifting. It isn't my job. It isn't my job to go around all the local councils on behalf of the orchestra to drum up support. It's the orchestra's job, pardon the pun. They need to go around drumming up support. And they've been very, very uh, sensitive and thankful and grateful to the support that they've received from Belfast City Council over a period of years and have acknowledged some small supports they've received from other councils. Um, the 15th of December is a date that's looming large for them. But I think the member will also uh, appreciate the fact that unless there's some long-term sustainability of new proposals brought forward by the orchestra, we could be here in a couple of months' time having the same discussion. None of us want that. We want to make sure that these proposals, hopefully on new models, a new way forward, will be sustainable. They will be robust and they will also attract additional sources of funding. Could I ask the Minister how much monies have been invested in the Ulster Orchestra from her department in recent years? Thank the member for his question, um, supplementary question, and I do stand to be corrected in this, but you know, approximately uh, from I would say 2010, there's been almost 10.9 million invested in the Ulster Orchestra. Now, um, <coughs> Recently, DECAL, uh, on top of what the Arts Council put in, invested 40, just over 48,000. Uh, the Arts Council have invested since 2010 £10,573,490 plus. Pounds. And as well as that, the uh, Ulster Orchestra also received £190,000, over £190,000 in the, the lottery funds as well. Uh, notwithstanding the fact that Belfast City Council has put substantial money in as also. So it is substantial money. It is very expensive to run orchestras, um, but they are kind of ballpark approximate figures. Mr. Mike Nesbitt. Speaker, reference to research benchmarking the Ulster Orchestra against similar orchestras uh, <coughs> elsewhere. Has she reached uh, an opinion on, on the balance uh, of performance between sort of formal recitals on a Friday night in the Ulster Hall and initiatives like the Paper Orchestra and that, that outreach educational <coughs> programme? Has the Ulster Orchestra got it right? Well, actually, uh, just to correct the member, I didn't do research into Ulster Orchestra to benchmark it against others. I just wanted to find out through my own uh, research what other orchestras were experiencing in terms of financial sustainability. The Paper Orchestra is a, an initiative that came from DECAL in conjunction with the Ulster Orchestra, particularly it happened in the Shankill and it happened in the Cullen. And if additional, and, well it is an additional investment, was to come forward to the Ulster Orchestra in terms of a rescue package or indeed uh, a continuation of support from DECAL through the Arts Council, they are the initiatives that will be conditional to that funding because young people need to have never experienced an orchestra before need to have that opportunity. They need to be inspired. You've got a good conductor uh, uh, with a, a new approach. Uh, and it is uh, regretful that we are in this position in terms of looking at rescue packages for the orchestra. But if something was to be brought forward, certainly initiatives that have outreach and the, the, the ability to bring what the orchestra has to offer to communities who would never have thought of going to see an orchestra before, they're going to be right centre in the middle of what we hope to do in the future. And I call Mr. John McAllister. Uh, thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, the Minister will be aware that she um, replied to a written question of mine about her involvement in the efficiency reform uh, process, and as to date, her department hasn't delivered any efficiency savings. Would, how does that sit with her call um, and demand of the orchestra to meet up to setting out a new? programme and efficiencies to realise and to make sure it saves itself, which I hope we're all supportive of. Well, the, the member is correct in saying that I mean, efficiency drives across all the departments are certainly more acute now. Um, but the member will also be aware that 
if, if the Ulster Orchestra were to receive some short-term funding from whomever it is before the 15th of December, and then thereafter a longer-term support package based on a new approach, that efficiency will, will certainly will dictate what that support will be, because we are living in very, very stringent times economically. Uh, but not to say that uh, the Ulster Orchestra, unlike, or just like any other services, aren't entitled to receive support. But certainly, uh, efficiencies will be dictating the level of support. Efficiencies will be dictating, even for the orchestra, what new models they will bring forward to certainly make them more sustainable in the future. Thank you. And I call Ms Paula Bradley. Well, Deputy Speaker, question three. Thank the member for her question. In 24 Commonwealth Fly Fishing Championships were held in the southwest of England in June, and I would congratulate the local team entered by the Ulster Provisional Council of the Trout Anglers Federation of Ireland, known as Taffy, on winning the bronze medal, and to Keith Ferguson on winning the individual silver, silver medal. Decal did not specific or did not receive specific requests for assistance in relation to the 2014 championships. DECAL has been approached by various angling associations in the past for support to participate in similar events. Um, I have previously met with representatives of TAFI and have indicated that I would be supportive of a future championship being hosted here in the north. I am pleased to advise that the National Course Fishing Federation of Ireland, in partnership with Craig Avon, Borough Council and DECAL, has been successful in its bid to host the 2015 World Lure Championships um, at Craig Avon Public Lakes. Park Lakes, sorry. I call Ms. Bradley for a supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. And can I thank the Minister for her reply? And also, can I congratulate those members of the Northern Ireland team? I know some of them are from my own um, home borough of Newton Abbey. And the Minister would also be aware that fly fishing is truly an inclusive sport, no matter of what age you are, what culture you come from, or whether you're an urban or a city dweller. So, could I ask uh, the Minister, could she look at how funding is allocated for this type of sport? Because, as I said, it's very much inclusive and it, it has, there's no barriers when it comes to fly fishing. It's there for everybody. Um, I thank the member for a question, indeed, her supplementary question and comments, or supplementary response. But she has rightly pointed out what I was going to say in terms of not just fly fishing, but angling across the board as one of the sports that I, thankfully, in recent years has received a bit more prominence. In our constituency, there are a few angling projects that, particularly for children and young people who would never have had any access other than through family members or scouts or local clubs, are now having to our lakes and waterways, uh, even our local parks, in terms of uh, fishing. And I, I'm looking at the future of angling, uh, and indeed, Sport and I had conducted a review, which I'm looking forward to seeing how we can roll this out in the future, because it is important not just for young fellas, but young girls, as we can see from the 2014-2015 bid, are now involved in England. I'm sure the member will agree with me this is a good trend and a good way to go forward in the future. I call Mr Oliver McMullen. Thank the Minister for the presentation. But can the Minister uh, outline uh, to the House here which international uh, England competitions and events has DECAL supported? Well, in 2013, DECAL supported uh, the World Youth Fly Fishing Championship, the World Lure Fishing uh, for Predators from Boats Championship, the World Police and Fire Games had game angling competitions as well, uh, and they were also involved in the Urn Course Classic and the Urn Pay Classic. And a number of these competitions involved DECAL working in partnership with the IFI and Rocks Agency, and certainly in the marketing and the promotion of these events. And I'm delighted to say that even that experience has actually helped to secure the bid for next year for the, the World Lure Championships in Craig Alvin. Thank you. And I call Mr Stuart Dixon. Question number four, Principal Deputy Speaker. Thank the member for his question. Uh, the funding question has been a case, key source of support for some of our most high profile festivals and events. And I recognise that many of these will be significantly impacted by its with potential withdrawal. Events such as Fally and Fubble, the North West 200, the Milk and Foil Cups, Wall City Tattoo, just, just to mention our few of those which will potentially be affected by the decision on behalf of the Tourist Board. These events are about much more than simply showcasing what we have to offer here in terms of money. They are also helping break, breaking down barriers 
within our local communities and help develop mutual respect amongst our increasingly diverse population. While I recognise the value that these larger events bring in terms of economic and social benefits, I do think it's important that the whole impact of small community events also have to be acknowledged and I understand that these events remain a priority for the tourist board and they will endeavour to source uh, budgets for these events in the future years. I call Mr Dixon for a supplement. I, I, thank you Minister for your, for your answer so far. Minister, can you explain to the House what, how you and what actions you intend to take to ensure that this range of significant cultural and sporting activities that have been taking place will not be lost to the economy and will not be lost to Northern Ireland as a result of changes in the budget? Well, the member you know, may be surprised, but I learned about these, these, this withdrawal, this fund, through the media. And again, it's still speculative of what uh, events will be supported and which events will not be supported. And I'm certainly trying to find ex out exactly what the Tourist Board will be supporting. But as I said to other members who raised this with me before, and I want to be totally clear on this, the Tourist Board made a decision not to bring forth advance funding. That doesn't mean to say that the responsibility for that gets passed on to DECAL. It isn't my responsibility to fund these events purely as a first source of funding. And I'm certainly loathed because a department, one department's made a decision that I pick the ball up and run, because uh, that's not happening. Councillor William Humphrey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Speaker, and thank the Minister for answers. Can I ask the Minister, in relation to the milk cup that was mentioned as part of the question, can I ask the, the Minister why, in the um, evidence given by the milk cup organisers only a few weeks ago at the decal committee, her department didn't give any funding to the milk cup, internationally renowned, attracting thousands of spectators each year, hundreds of people, players coming from across the world, and decal found it unable to sponsor that particular event? Why is that? Well, I am uh, confused why the member thinks I have never uh, invested any money in the milk foil cup. I actually have this year in terms in terms of October monitoring, in terms of the in terms of the October monitoring round for the milk and foil cup, but the milk cup for this year, we were advised by the organisers that they couldn't spend the money before the end of this financial year. So it's it's uh, it's obviously that information has me fed back to the member in fairness to him. Mr. Ian Mull. People ask on Collier, August Mowakist on Eric uh, Shaw. Uh, can I ask the Minister, does the Minister agree that it is vital that sports and cultural events are supported as they are vital to the local economy and key factor in attracting tourism? Yes, I would agree with the member. It is vital that uh, these, this uh, cultural package uh, for events, or the, uh, certainly the events support for cultural packages in sports and even some of the bigger events. Uh, is supported as best possible in future years. Uh, I, the member will know better than I, coming from a, a rural background, that uh, when there are events, particularly in small rural areas or in rural communities, actually have <coughs> sometimes the only opportunity for regenerating some of the local economy. The local and small businesses have come to rely on this, uh, th these benefits on an annual basis, and um, it is with regret that they are now in a situation where they're, they're wondering what will happen this year, and uh, it will be uh, important that the, the tourist board have indicated that, where possible, they will still try and have these events focused as a priority. But they're certainly waiting on the availability of funding, like many of these other groups. Call Mr. John Dallet. Deputy uh, Speaker, I don't intend to chastise the minister for the gross errors of the Northern Ireland Tourist Board, but would she accept from me? that there is now a responsibility in her to give leadership and guidance to the organisers of events such as the Milk Cup, the North West 200, Foil Cup and so on, who have clearly been grossly let down by the Tourist Board, who apparently don't see beyond Titanic Centre. Um, well, I'm, I'm, happy, um, I'm happy to forward the copy of the Hansard of these questions to uh, the Deputy Minister to forward on to the Tourist Board. I know, I know some of our officials have engaged with some of the events organisers because it's not surprising. I'm sure the member will not be surprised. They have came to DECAL seeking support and assistance. Um, and what small support and assistance that we give to the events, which, as a member will be aware, was transferred from DECAL in 2010 
for reasons which will become known in the future. Uh, it is with regret that th these people are now sitting in a situation where they don't know if they can at all plan events. And it is important, particularly for areas like the North West, that there's more security and sustainability for such events in the future. Thank you. And I call Mr Declan McAleer. Um, question number three, question five. I thank the member for his question. The range of angling licences in the north reflects the different types of fishing available. They offer choice and value for money to anglers, particularly concessionary licences for senior citizens, those with disabilities and indeed visiting uh, uh, groups. I recognise, however, that there are scope to simplify the current regime and we are already making good progress in this. My officials have been working with the NI Direct in identifying an e-commerce solution to identify the existing licensing system. In an initial step, the layout of these licenses have been changed, which has reduced the number of different license books held by distributors. We have also centralised the administration of licenses and permits to my department's Portadown office. In April 2014, NI Direct-led project was prioritised as a programme for government commitment to improving citizen services. A project board has been established to advance this work, and NI Direct this week has commenced on an exercise to scope uh, the business and IT requirements in developing e-commerce solutions for a new licensing and permits system. Could the Minister give us an update on the, de on the development of an All-Ireland e-licensing system? Um, <clears throat> SEUPB, uh, the Special European Programmes Body, was commissioned, uh, commissioned a scope and study um, in conjunction with the Law Station, CD, Cullen and, and Land Fisheries, and the purpose was to explore the possibility of implementing e-licensing projects to meet the needs. Um, a potential future product arising from this work could be the provision of an All-Ireland e-licensing for Salmon and Sea, Trail Anglin and Northern Anglin. The study makes recommendations for an All-Ireland e-licensing system online market and platform that will increase the efficiency of current sales and management. The report makes a series of recommendations and cost projections to advance this project. Um, the business case is currently being commissioned and it will examine these issues in detail and it will also take into account the opportunity to integrate in Land Fisheries Group's current NI Direct project for the purpose of an all Ireland solution. Danny Kinahan. Thank you very much, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and thank the Minister for her question. Good to uh, for answer. Good to hear that she's supporting anglers so much. But when it comes to councils, has she had discussions with um, that minister and that department about the future use of reservoirs that are being made redundant and being sold because they too affect the anglers? Uh, not just councils, but also with her own colleague, the minister for DRD. I'm hoping to have discussions with him in the future, but I know officials have been working across the board and looking at some of the uh, the reservoirs that NI Water have our surface to requirements for, so we're certainly looking at those and getting into uh, management arrangements around those. And it, it is about affordability, but certainly, um, particularly when uh, Anglin has and is currently available on those reservoirs, there is an expectation that that uh, service and that access will be continued, regardless if it is surplus to requirements by NI Water, and we're certainly looking at those to see what of any arrangements we can take to the future, but I'm certainly very supportive of this and hopefully other, other ministers will be as well because there will be a cost implication to it, but rather than get on with the work than wait to find out what the cost is. Mr Chris Little. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister if there's any update in relation to the regulation of inshore sea angling, similar to uh, freshwater angling? Um, <coughs> I don't have any responsibility for sea angling, um, although <laughs> the fish don't know that. <laughs> but, um, but certainly in terms of uh, salmon conservation and trout conservation within inland waterways, um, the member will be aware that we brought forward consultation and it's now mandatory catch and, catch and release. And I know certainly in terms of working with colleagues in DART 3 and Locks Agency 3 Offby, we're looking at inland waterways and sea fishing. Um, but I'm afraid this, this question is going to be half, have to be asked in the Dart Minister. Thank you. And that uh, brings us to the end of the period for listed questions. And we will now move on to topical questions. And I call Mr Peter Weir.
Thank you, Mr. De Deputy Principal Speaker. Can I ask the Minister, in light of the legal challenge by residents, for an update on the redevelopment of Casement Park? Well, the member should be aware, given his legal background, that the fact that this challenge is still within the courts, that it isn't appropriate for me to comment on it. Can I ask the Minister then uh, a supplementary in terms of whether the Department, notwithstanding a legal challenge, has any uh, target date for the start date for actual works at Casement Park? Well, what I can't say is I'm anticipating, if that's what the member is trying to extract, I'm anticipating a response from the, the Judicial Review here sometime this month, hopefully, within the next few weeks. And if that decision is favourable to the Department, work will commence almost immediately. So we're here for a supplement. Thank you, pardon. No, no extra time. We get an extra time. The, the Minister will be aware from previous questions from myself to her department that I have a particular interest in the creative industries. I would welcome hearing from the Minister um, what plans she has to ensure that Straban is included in the creative industries. Um, I thank the member for a question. Thank her for her ongoing interest in the creative industries. Um, I am aware that she, along with other representatives of that area, met with some of the DECAL officials in relation to how they can be extended as part of the legacy of the City of Culture. Uh, I assume that those discussions will be ongoing with herself and other uh, representatives, including community representatives, um, and she should be assured that Straban and other areas surrounding the City of Derry will be included in any future plans. Michaela Boyle for supplement. Uh, Grimorga, can I thank the Minister for her answer? And given the demand for creative learning uh, centre support, can the Minister advise if any community planning by her North West team will factor um, specific uh, outreach in terms of specific areas of funding to Straban and indeed the surrounding areas? Yes, uh, happy to give the member assurance that Straban and other areas will be factored into this, certainly in terms of. If you look at the work of the nurse centre in Derry and even just the, the plans they have to bring that out to surrounding areas, that the, the areas in question will be part of any consultation with, about what that service should look like. And it is important that elected representatives work closely with my department to bring this forward um, because a lot of the people have been looking very, very thankfully to the city of Derry. They actually want some of that in their community. Uh, so, I want to ensure that DECAL will be consistent in its approach to make sure that excellent services in the city are spread throughout that part of the area. And, uh, I will not be calling the member who is listed for question three for reasons that have been already outlined to the House. So I call Mr Gordon Dunn. Thank you, Mr Deputy Principal Speaker. Can I ask the Minister what our views are on the display of an illegal Hamas flag during a recent Cliftonville, Cliftonville football match? at Windsor Park on Saturday the 18th of October, when I understand the flag was displayed for over one hour? Um, well, the member will know that I am a Clevenville supporter, but I wasn't at that match in question. Um, I have absolutely no information about the display of that flag or any other flag for over one hour at that match, uh, but I imagine it's a position that the IFA and UEFA will take up with the club. Mr. Dunn for supplement. Thank you, Mr. Principal Speaker, Deputy Speaker. Will the Minister give us an assurance here today that she will uh, be in contact with Cliptonville Football Club regarding the issue and give us uh, some further assurance that this will not reoccur? Well, I, I, I think the member is um, a bit naive to think that I have any control over Cliptonville or any other soccer club. Uh, if that, I am a supporter, and, uh, and like the member, as he's a supporter of his local clubs, he would condemn any behaviour that isn't in keeping with the guiding principles of the football club. So what I'll do is I'll happily forward the, through my department, uh, through the IFA, your comments, and you know, pass, pardon the pun, pass the ball on to them. Call Ms. Joanne Dobson. Thank you, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister to detail the makeup of the capital bid for the UK City of Culture legacy? Um, I'm happy. I'll happy to write to the member um, uh, on the details of that, uh, and certainly um, 
It is in keeping with the announcement I made in the city last November. Uh, certainly, I didn't receive all the funding that I uh, would hope I would. But like every monitor and round, I've consistently made a bid in terms of fulfilling the legacy of the city of culture. Uh, and I was very lucky to receive some capital money in October, and I will continue that trend throughout the different monitor and rounds. Dobson for a supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Furthermore, can I ask the Minister, is she satisfied that this budget will be spent during the year, and what are her plans for the year 2015-2016 with respect to that legacy? Well, I have no doubt that the money will be spent because, as the member will be aware, and through her own work in her, in her own constituency, that when groups are waiting on the availability of funding, that not only do they have their projects ready and good to go, but they literally have in their heads uh, the money spent even before they get it. So there's, I haven't met a group yet in, in the city or the surrounding areas who is kind of sitting swinging their legs. They're all very busy getting themselves ready. Uh, and so the, the money will be spent, and certainly for 2015 and 16, and even through the duration of the next mandate, I anticipate that the city, the legacy of the city of culture, and indeed the legacy, that we need to fulfil in the North West area will continue from one mandate to another. Well, Mr George Robinson. <coughs> Thank you, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, could, could I ask the Minister to confirm if any <coughs> finances will be made available to upgrade Irish League football clubs, such as Coleraine? Well, uh, the, what, what has become known as the sub-regional programme for soccer will become available in the next CSR period. Um, I will be making a bid very, very soon to my uh, executive colleague, the Minister for Finance and Personnel, for those funds, which are substantial, um, to the IFA for new facilities, uh, and notwithstanding the fact that uh, the member has particularly mentioned Coleraine, there, there are no decisions made for any areas where that funding uh, will be invested in despite some of the speculation in the media. Well, Mr Robinson, for a supplementary. Thank you. <clears throat> Will that include B Division clubs as well, such as Luma Valley United? <laughs> uh, I, I, I think it's a matter for the IFA to present uh, a, a facilities management strategy, and certainly it's for me to uh, make the decision on what that strategy, what investment that strategy will be received. But, but notwithstanding the fact that the member has a right to ensure that the smaller clubs aren't forgotten in any future potential investment, uh, and I'm sure he will lobby, along with his colleagues in that area, to make sure that his constituency isn't uh, ignored when it comes to future investment. And I'm sure any centre forward would be pleased with that opportunism. So could I call uh, Mr Ross Hussey? He's not in this place, so I'll call Mr Trevor Long. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, the Minister didn't get to uh, question 11 on the main list about the fish kills, but uh, it's a matter of interest. Could I, could I ask her to outline the extent of her department's involvement in the aftermath of these all too frequent fish kills, including the one at Glen Avon more recently, the one in the Six Mile Water just last week? Yeah. Well, I, I want to join the member to say that the, these fish kills are you know, very worrying. Uh, I mean, there have been a lot of speculation, there has been a lot of speculation about the cause of these fish kills, one of which is pollution, uh, another is around the global warming and the environment, uh, and indeed some of it is environmental to the lakes and waterways in terms of um, biosecurity, but certainly, um, I mean, the latter example of Six Mile is a private uh, waterway, but notwithstanding that, it is regrettable. A lot of local anglers, privately through their own pockets, have stocked those lakes. My department is working with uh, the Department of Environment and indeed AFBE to try and ascertain the causes of those fish kills because we need to learn lessons, identify if possible where the sources of those fish kills are with a view of trying to get them eradicated for the future. Too long for a supplementary. Yes, uh, I, th I thank the Minister for her answer so far. But th these fish kills have been going on since time immemorial. There's just a succession of them expected this time of the year because you get run off from slurries onto the river. Uh, and it seems to me that there's, there's at least four departments involved when you try to sort out what's going on here and who's to blame because nobody ever seems to get the blame. It's your own department, you've got Daddy, you've got Dard, and you have um, 
the Department of the Environment. Is, is there not room? Would, would the Minister commit to trying to work with the other departments to try and put something together which might produce a better outcome and a more cohesive approach to this problem? The is right in saying that there are several departments involved in this, but none of the departments are blamed or should be blamed for any pollution to the waterways because we're left to pick the pieces up, frankly. And what I would advocate is identifying the source. If it is pollution, identifying the source and prosecute. And prosecute with the maximum fine to try and ensure that uh, there is a deterrent. I know of one case that has been in the media, but there have been others where several fines have been levied at one person and they seem to pay the fine and get on with it. And the environment, including local, the fish, local uh, uh, fl flowers and fauna, have been uh, experiencing uh, pollution, not just for the here and now, but indeed for generations to come. And I think it's incumbent upon us all to ensure that we uh, tackle this as best possible. But certainly, uh, my, to give the member my assurance, my commitment is to try and find the source of this latest pollution uh, and then uh, go for the maximum penalties and go for prosecution. Thank you. And the Commissar Ali Gatwood. Uh, thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Um, I had the, the great um, joy of uh, attending the uh, closing concert in the Belfast Festival um, at the weekend, the gloaming. Uh, Anna Lowe was there uh, uh, at an event which saw the recreation of Irish traditional music in an image of something different from the past. Given the budget, concern, uh, the budget announcement today, can the Minister be definitive when she will be able to indicate to the Arts Council and all the other funding bodies their budget line for next year? Well, I <coughs> thank the member for his uh, question and indeed we um, also congratulate the Ulster Bank Festival at Queen's and many other festivals for the wonderful gift that, that they give, particularly the city of Belfast, in terms of the activities. I had the pleasure of attending one of those myself, um, the internationally renowned artist. Um, uh, the, the, the gay gods, which was on television. But certainly, in terms of budget lines, I have meetings uh, scheduled within the next fortnight, but my officials are currently meeting the ALBs this week to outline uh, the percentages of the budgets that they are going to have. Uh, and it is important that we get those indications sooner rather than later so forward planning can occur. And Mr. Edward, for a supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Edward. I could, could I welcome, but uh, that question, in as far as it went, I welcome the fact that there's meetings. But when will you be able to say, in hard cash terms, what the Arts Council and all the other funding bodies will have in terms of their budget line, baseline, uh, for next year? Is it a month? Is it two months? Noting, of course, that it's all subject to a budget being approved or not by this House in March. Well, uh I think the member has been a bit silly. He will know even from his own experience as Minister that the, ind the, the indicative figures are already there, which the ALBs have. Mm -hmm. So they have an indicative spend. We will be meeting again this week. This week they will know exactly what they have, particularly from today. Uh, and so those figures will be worked out by the ALBs in terms of what they have, as the member puts it, in terms of cold cash. Call Ms Pam Cameron for a quick question. Thank you, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker. And, um, I apologise to the Minister in advance if I'm, if I'm asking a very similar question. I didn't quite pick up uh, what Mr Lund was saying about the, uh, the six mile water the fish kill. But what I wanted to ask the Minister was um, what level of support her department will be providing um, Ballinger Angling Club following the fish kill last week? Um, well, in terms of support, we're actually working with the angling clubs and indeed, um, as I mentioned to Mr Lund, uh, other departments uh, in terms of trying to identify what the causes of the fish kill were, uh, trying to look at ways in which we can uh, actually eradicate some of these difficulties because the Six Mile Water is a private estate, as a member will know, private club. Um, but certainly, certainly the expense of restocking those uh, lakes and rivers and waterways is more acutely felt, particularly when it's come out in members' pockets. We need to identify the causes of this. And if, it, if the causes are pollution, uh, identify the, the, the people who are responsible for the pollution and prosecute them. 
Uh, and uh, that is time up for uh, the topical questions. Uh, 